In this series of YouTube videos looking at Heathkit amateur radio and short wave receivers, we look next at the EK2B. This radio was a little different from the other products I've looked at in that it was sold as a part of an educational training course on electronics and radio theory. The course, actually a series of courses, included both theory and hands-on experiments, which culminated in building the radio. It was part of a series of four courses, EK1, EK2A and 2B, and EK3. All of the courses were offered separately, and each consisted of a workbook with about 100 pages of training material, as well as the electronic components needed for the hands-on labs. Unlike the Heathkit assembly manuals that came with kits, these were complete courses that included theory, hands-on experiments, and exercises. EK1 was the first course in the series and covered an introduction to electricity and electronics. It covered topics like what electricity is and Ohm's law. Experiments started with circuits using batteries and lamps. Ultimately, the student built a VOM, volt ohm milliammeter, which could measure voltage, resistance, and current, and is useful for general electronics work such as appliance repair and building other Heath kits. My 1961 Heath kit catalog lists the price of the EK1 course at $27.95, which included the parts for the VOM, and in 1971 it was $24.95. My printed course manual is dated 1959. I have the course material but not the VOM hardware that went along with it. Courses EK2A and EK2B covered basic radio theory and built on the fundamentals from EK1. EK2A covered basic radio concepts and built up a two-tube regenerative receiver. My manual is dated December 1960. Course EK2B continued with a more detailed presentation of radio theory that built up a six-tube, two-band superhet receiver, the EK2B, that I have. My manual is dated December 1964. In my 1961 catalog, the EK2A and EK2B courses were selling for $29.95 each. For an additional $5.95, you could buy the AK8 cabinet for the receiver. Otherwise, it only consisted of an open chassis. In my 1971 catalog shown here, the courses were $21.50 each, and the case was a whopping $3.95. The EK2 radio that the student eventually built up, a stage at a time, offered coverage of two bands, the AM broadcast band from 540 to 1600 kHz, and shortwave from 3 to 10 MHz. It uses a 455 kHz IF frequency and sported an adjustable BFO, so you could receive Morse code and single sideband transmissions as well as AM. It utilized six tubes and was basically a design called the All-American 5, the standard 5-tube radio design that was common from the late 1940s into the early 60s, with an additional tube to support the BFO, as well as band switching to add a short wave band. The radio did not have a built-in antenna, it needed an external one, although a short piece of wire would suffice to pick up local AM broadcast in some short wave stations. The performance is not great, particularly on short wave, but the purpose was really to learn, and having a working radio to show for your efforts would have been very satisfying. EK3 was a course on basic transistors and was introduced a little later than the EK2A and 2B courses that focused on vacuum tubes. It covered a basic theory of how transistors work and resulted in building a little two-station intercom system. My manual is dated December 1961. This was early days for transistors and shows how Heathkit was on the forefront of technology at the time. The kit uses two 2N1274 transistors which mounted on sockets. These are germanium transistors, which were common at the time, but today most transistors and integrated circuits use silicon. Incidentally, my Heathkit HW16 transceiver uses one 2N1274 transistor in the receiver circuit. The rest of the design uses tubes. The EK3 course is not listed in my 1961 Heathkit catalog, but in my 1971 catalog it was selling for $19.95. Taking a look at the completed EK2B, you can see it with the optional case. 
The front panel has switches for BFO and speaker, an on-off and volume control, band switch, and tuning. Tuning uses a pretty standard slide rule dial with dial cord arrangement. Being able to switch the speaker independently of the headphones is a little unusual. Most designs used a headphone jack that muted the speaker when phones were plugged in. On the back are antenna and ground lugs and headphone jack. Removing the case, you can see the parts are built on a standard metal chassis using point-to-point -point wiring. Most of the wiring is under the chassis. The builder did a pretty good job of putting this unit together. Note that the radio uses a power transformer. Most of the AA5 type radios at the time omitted this, which saved money, but typically meant that the chassis had live AC power on it, which was extremely dangerous. A power transformer isolates the unit from AC power, making it safer. Although today I doubt that a line-operated radio with exposed high voltage like this would be targeted as being suitable for young people to build. I got my unit of this radio in September 2005 on eBay. It came with the optional case, which had some damage but was repairable. It's made of thin wood with a paper covering. The 5Y3GT rectifier tube was intermittent and had a visibly broken wire to the filament. I was able to pick up some stations on the AM band. Two of the original knobs were missing. I replaced the 5Y3GT tube and put on some different knobs. I did a full alignment of the radio, and it did not have any circuitry component problems, and now works quite well. My unit did not come with a manual. I purchased a full set of the EK1 through EK3 manuals on eBay. They make for interesting reading. I reviewed most of the material. The courses were aimed at both adults and young people. You can see a little blatant sexism of the time in the catalog copy from 1961 which says, Start now on an exciting and challenging career in electronics by exposing you or your son to basic electronics. Note the picture of the two young boys working on the radio while their sister watches in the background. I would think that the full series of courses would take several months to complete if the student followed all of the material, did the labs, and wrote the quizzes. These were early training courses. At the time, Heathkit also offered courses on test equipment like oscilloscopes and VTVMs that included test equipment kits. In the later days of Heathkit, training courses were the major part of their business, continuing after they exited the kit business in the 1990s. For its time, this series of courses were an excellent way to get started in electronics, either as a hobbyist or for one who wanted to make a career out of it. Keep in mind that in the 1950s and 60s, radio and television repair was a viable business. Despite not being a particularly good receiver, unbuilt versions of this kit have sold for over $600 on eBay, capitalizing on the nostalgia factor. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radio and test equipment.